Yo, 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 what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Adam Moose, and today in this series called In Depth, I'm going to be breaking down everything that you need to know about Nocturne Jungle. Embrace the darkness. Nocturne is an OG jungler who always seems to find his place in the meta. Although he does not have the flashiest kit, he's always been a solid pick to add into your champion pool if you want to dominate with his game breaking ultimate. If you enjoy the content, it really helps me out if you could leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel to help your boy out with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to talk with me and other members in the community, be sure to join the Discord link that's in the description. I hope you guys can learn something. Enjoy the video. Nocturne's passive is called Umbra Blades. Periodically, Nocturne's next basic attack causes him to slash in a circle that deals bonus physical damage to the target and all nearby enemies. He also heals himself based on how many enemies that he hits. Basic attacks reduce Umbra Blades cooldown by 1 second, increase to 3 seconds against monsters and enemy champions. This is a great tool to increase clear speeds, healing, and DPS in fights. Nocturne's Q it's called Duskbringer. Nock casts out a shadow blade in the target direction that leaves a dusk trail in its wake, dealing physical damage to all enemies hit. Enemy champions hit will then leave a dusk trail behind them while moving. While on the trail, Nocturne is ghosted, gains bonus movement speed, and increase attack damage. This is Nock's all around most spammable ability since it deals AoE damage and gives you bonus movement speed. You want to be using this on cooldown to clear, to chase champions down in fights, and even while running around the map for efficiency. Nocturne's W is called Shroud of Darkness. Passively, Nocturne gains bonus attack speed. When activated, Nocturne gains a spell shield for 1.5 seconds. If this blocks an ability, the bonus attack speed is doubled for 5 seconds. This is one of the simplest abilities in the entire game, which is actually very powerful, but must be timed correctly to block crucial abilities and bolster your DPS. Nocturne's E is called Unspeakable Horror. Nocturne torments the target, forming a tether between himself and the target for 2 seconds, dealing magic damage over the duration. If the tether is not broken by the end of its duration, the target is feared while being slowed by 90%. Passively, Nocturne gains 90% bonus movement speed while moving towards feared targets. This is Nocturne's only form of CC and is a fantastic tool to lock down single targets and take them out. Since the tether range is quite short, it's important to keep the enemy's movement spells in mind to not waste your fear. You can also predict enemy's movement and follow with flash to ensure that the CC on the fed enemy carries land. Nocturne's ultimate is called Paranoia. Nocturne terrorizes all enemy champions, giving them near sight for 6 seconds. This effect is extremely powerful, and it will make it very difficult for the enemy team to coordinate due to the lack of vision and minimap info. After a short delay, Nocturne can recast his ult to dash with displacement immunity towards a target enemy champion, dealing physical damage on arrival. This is one of the most powerful ultimates in the entire game due to its gigantic range and disruption potential. This can be used to gank from long range, confuse the enemy team in chaotic teamfights, or even to dive into the enemy backline to get on top of an immobile carry and single them out. We'll discuss this more in the coming sections, just keep in mind that although this is a very powerful ult, it has a ridiculously long cooldown so you cannot afford to waste it. For ability maxing, Nocturne usually maxes Q first, E second, and W third. In cases where you don't need the extra fear duration from E and want more attack speed from W, W max second is also viable. For runes, Nocturne's options are very straightforward. First off for keystones, Conqueror and Lethal Tempo are going to be your most optimal choices by far. Although in my opinion Conqueror is the most consistent pick, since it gives you the strongest early skirmishing power and healing, if you want a more scaling DPS and you want to play for on hit damage, Lethal Tempo is also very strong for the scaling attack speed. To close out the Precision Tree, Triumph, Legend Alacrity for attack speed, Legend Tenacity against heavy CC, Coup de Grasse to burst squishies, and Last Stand into tankier teams. For secondary, Domination is by far the strongest pick. 
Eyeball Collection and Ultimate Hunter are the go-tos, especially since Nocturne's identity revolves around his ulti, having it up as often as possible will make a massive difference. It's also worth mentioning the Electrocute setup, which although much less consistent, can still be strong in some niche situations against very squishy teams. Cheap Shot or Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection, and Ultimate Hunter are going to be your main choices, with either Precision or Inspiration secondary. For Rune Shards, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and either Armor or Magic Resist depending on your jungle matchup, and Enemy Team Comp are the standard. Now let's discuss Nocturne's best item builds for Season 12. To start, Red Smite is the best overall option for stronger dueling power, while Blue Smite can work if the enemy team is very slippery. For Boots, Ionian Boots of Lucidity are by far the most consistent for the extra CDR, while Merc Treads are solid into lots of CC, and Plated Steel Caps into heavy AD teams. Now for Mythics, Stridebreaker is by far the most common and consistent pick, as it gives Nocturne massive sticking power once he gets onto a target with his ultimate and E. Gore Drinker is also viable if you really need sustain, but is not recommended in most cases over Stridebreaker. If you want a more bursty setup, Duskblade and Eclipse can be fun options, although not recommended if you want consistency. You only want to be running Lethality builds if the enemy team is extremely squishy. For core items, Death's Dance, Black Cleaver, Guardian Angel, Mauve Mamordius, and Axiom Arc are going to be your main options. After your Mythic, your goal is to build tanky enough to survive engaging, while also building damage to single out vulnerable enemy carries. It's also important to remember that Ability Haste is extremely important on Nocturne to allow for a short alt cooldown. This is why items such as Black Cleaver and Axiom Arc are core to his build to ensure you always have your ulti up when needed. To close out your build, you really just want to beef up and get as powerful as possible to achieve your goals. We'll discuss Nocturne's win conditions in more detail later, just know that you're either looking to ult into side lanes to help your split pushers, or to dive into the backline to pick off enemy carries. Since Nocturne has tons of item diversity, learning in which games to build which items will make a huge difference in your results. Now let's discuss Nocturne's jungle strategy and pathing. First off for your clear, make sure you're always standing on your dusk trail while autoing for increased damage and using your passive AoE to hit all monsters in your clear. Your auto should be focused on taking down the high HP targets, while your Q and passive AoE can take care of the rest. You can also use your spell shield to dodge dragon attacks, Herald's swipe, and Baron's abilities to give yourself the double attack speed, which helps out your DPS quite a bit. For abilities, maxing E second is the standard, since the increased fear duration is good for chasing down ranged champions, as well as 1v1ing melees. With that being said, Champions like Mordekaiser, Dr. Mundo, Cho'Gath, and Olaf will all be easier to fight with W Max. Maxing W second against these kinds of champions will give you higher DPS and increase your chances of winning 1v1s against them. You can also run Ignite into certain melee bruiser matchups such as Olaf and Viego to cut their healing and win fights. I would not recommend Ignite in most games though, since Flash is not only a more consistent spell, but also lets you stick onto targets and keep your fear tether in range. For jungle clears, Nocturne's most standard consistent path is the full clear. Since your goal is to reach level 6 as fast as possible, getting to level 4 as soon as you can and contesting scuttle will be your best bet in most games. This also allows you to put your camps on respawn timers right away so you can do a second rotation full clear out of base. You can even put a second point into Q at level 3 for a faster clear, just be sure that you won't be needing your fear for an early fight. Now although Nocturne does not have the best ganks, you still definitely want to look to punish overextended laners and bully weak early game skirmishers such as Amumu and Zac. If you see an opening for an early play, you can do a 3 camp clear into ganker invade, which consists of clearing buff buff gromp, or the more standard buff raptors gromp to hit a fast level 3 and get onto the map. You can even do a 4 or 5 camp clear, although not recommended unless there is a really free play to be made. Although your main focus is to farm and hit level 6, you still need to keep the enemy's win conditions in mind to be able to counter gank when necessary. This is crucial to learn on Nocturne, since counter ganking the right lane can most times mean getting huge leads for yourself 
while also keeping your team in the game. Nocturne also has great skirmishing power, so if enemies overcommit into a fight and you pop out of the bush, they'll most likely get mowed down. Now after you get your ult, you become a ganking machine that can start putting the pressure on. Your mindset should now shift to focusing out the enemy's most vulnerable laners and playing to steamroll them out of the game. After the laning phase, Nocturne can switch up his playstyle to fit multiple win conditions. If your team has a strong split pusher, you can start hovering near them to quickly overpower one side of the map and demolish the side lanes. If your team consists of backline divers such as Leona or Orn, you can now become a secondary engage to delete the enemy's carries. Although Nocturne's mechanics are simple, learning how to play them in each game state is what really separates an expert from a beginner. Nocturne's biggest weakness is how reliant he is on his ult to be useful. Paranoia is one of the most impactful abilities in the entire game, but that definitely comes with its downsides as well. First is how long the cooldown is, meaning that misusing it in any way will not only punish you for that play, but also for the next couple minutes. To build on this, since Nox ult is such a massive part of his kit, he can struggle to make plays happen pre-level 6. This can definitely be tilting in some games, where your lanes are getting smashed early on and you do not have much presence on the map. Since Nocturne does not have any dashes or strong ganking tools, you'll mainly be preying on enemies who make mistakes to get yourself an advantage. You can avoid this by protecting vulnerable lanes as mentioned earlier, but is certainly a weak point of his. Due to this, Nocturne struggles into junglers such as Trundle, Nunu, and Jarvan, since they can all make tons of plays early on before you have time to come online. Next is that since Nocturne likes to engage but is not a full tank, he can struggle if he's the only diving champ on the team. He's a great follow up for an engagement, but going in solo is definitely a recipe for disaster unless you pick the right moment. Now let's discuss what makes Nocturne such a great pick in the jungle. First and definitely most obvious is how Nocturne has one of the strongest ults in the entire game. Not only is it great for ganking, but it's a really strong macro tool as well. An expert Nocturne player will always be in the right position to follow up with an ult if needed, and playing against this is extremely hard to deal with. To build on this, Nox snowballs extremely hard if he can get kills due to Ultimate Hunter. Once a Nocturne gets rolling, not only does he get hard to duel, his map presence constantly increases with shorter and shorter CDs on his ult. Next is that Nox actually has great dueling power, especially since his spell shield can block crucial abilities if timed correctly. This is why Nocturne thrives into junglers such as Amumu, Poppy, Lee Sin, Nidalee, and Gragas. All of their main abilities are easily dodgeable with W, meaning they can pretty much never win duels if you're on your game. Last is that Nocturne is very easy to play, and it's a great pick to climb on if you have solid game knowledge. Unlike a champ such as Nidalee who constantly relies on mechanical outplays, Nocturne is a very basic champion that rewards smart decision making. This is why I highly recommend Nock for newer players who want to learn the fundamentals of the jungle. Nocturne is a powerful dueling jungler who has tons of map presence with his long range ultimate. He has a flexible build and playstyle, making him a very solid pick to have in your champion pool. If you're looking to pick up a duelist jungler who can have massive impact on the map, Nocturne is definitely the pick for you. That will do it for my Season 12 in-depth guide on Nocturne Jungle. If you want to support my content, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up to date with my weekly videos. If you're looking to add more jungle champs to your pool, make sure to check out the rest of my in-depth series to find more guides just like this one. And finally, if you want to have a chance of winning a free coaching session, make sure to join the Discord in the description so you can participate in our monthly giveaways. With all that being said, thanks again for watching, until the next video.